All right, ESPN's Lewis Riddick joins me for a one-on-one. And, Lewis, you're on the call tomorrow night against the Bears. Well, you're on the call tomorrow night, Bears versus Vikings 7-15 at Soldier Field. Second time in two years you've been on this call uh, with these two teams. And um, b- before we talk football, I, I got to ask you, because last year it was your first time calling games on Monday Night Football. We talked about that a little bit. But now in your second year, I think people are starting to appreciate the chemistry you, Steve, and Brian have in that booth. You don't see many – Many uh, major networks have three guys in the booth. And the fact that you guys are able to do it at a high level, like how is that all able to work? Yeah, you know, it's really, it's about being a little bit selfless. Because, I mean, there, there's something that really, that either one of us, from, from an analyst perspective anyway, Brian or myself, could say about every play. But you kind of like have to have a lot of uh, nonverbal communication, some verbal communication about, you know, some about who's going to take what highlight, who's going to take what what breakdown. Sometimes we kind of play off of one another and, and we're able to commentate and analyze each play individually. I mean, together, mm-hmm. uh, Steve does a good job of maybe facilitating some conversation. So it's not always just play analysis, play analysis, play analysis. If you if you notice, we do a lot of <laughs> storytelling. Sometimes mm-hmm. we'll let a couple of plays go that we really won't even analyze and kind of get into big picture topics. So there's a lot of planning involved. There's a lot of, like I said, selflessness about understanding um, maybe what's good for the broadcast overall and what's good for educating the viewer, mm-hmm. entertaining the viewer a little bit, and not so much about, you know, showing how smart you are with X's and O's every single play. Although, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, I'd like, you know, and then you just kind of like let the other person take it and vice versa. So I think if you, as long as you take that approach, you're good. If, if you just want to hammer home X and O stuff every play about, you know, and make it about yourself, then it's probably not going to work. So right. There'll be some people who get ticked off, and the next thing you know, you'll be able to tell that. So, But it's been good, man. It's always a continual work in progress because there's always ways it could be smoother and better. And, uh, you know, we always identify things that we want to work on, and we have a few for tomorrow that uh, maybe you, the viewer won't notice, but we sure will. Yeah, I, I always I look at it as Steve sets you guys up. He's the guy that's, you know, painting the picture for the, the canvas to be painted on. And then uh, Brian is the quarterback. So he has to see all 22 guys at the same time. And then you as the defensive minded guy and the, 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 the big picture guy just all meshes together. So I, I love it as a viewer. I'm sure viewers love it. I'm glad you guys are, are killing it. And just looking at the Monday night football matchups this year. Eight out of the last 13 games have been decided by seven points or less. This Bears-Vikings game, uh, this rivalry, 25 points, is the most that any team has scored since Mike Zimmer has been the head coach. How do you see these two things shaking up uh, tomorrow night? Yeah, this this one's really a roll of the dice simply because you just don't know for the Chicago Bears in particular who's going to be available, especially on the defensive side. And that's not a good recipe for success for them, considering how explosive the Vikings offense can be and should be, especially if Adam Thielen returns tomorrow and he, in fact, does play. We'll see what game time, how he feels and whether or not he's ready to rock and roll. But, I mean, between him and KJ and Justin, it's that I mean, that's a lot right there, man. <laughs> that's a lot. And then when you have him, add in the fact that Dalvin is just a warrior, the offensive line's going to, you know, maybe get healthier and maybe Christian Darisol's back at left tackle. So mm-hmm. now – now you maybe you have your your starting five plus some guys who have really been able to, to develop some depth, you know, through their playing experience on the offensive line. Kirk's playing at a real high level, probably as good as he's played since he's been here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and Clint Kubiak has really brought out the aggressiveness in, in along with Coach Zimmer, just letting Kirk just let it rip. So for Chicago, I don't know what that means in a secondary that's not going to have any of their regular top four starters. You know, obviously Khalil Mack hasn't played in a long time. Robert Quinn is one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. He could set the single season sack record, breaking the great Richard Dent sack record for Chicago by the end of this season. Mm -hmm. Akeem Hicks is back, Eddie Goldman's back. So, look, they've got some, they've got some players, man. But as we know, the game is about being able to limit explosives and yards through the air. If you really want to stay in contention in an NFL game, I just don't know how they're going to be able to do that. Um, and it's going to be a lot for the young for young Justin Fields, man, because you know Mike Zimmer's going to have some stuff dialed up for him. Yeah. And say, hey, young buck, prove it to me. <laughs> prove it to me that you can handle what I'm about to bring at you. So, but you know how divisional matchups go, too. That's why you play them. That's mm-hmm. why you play all the games. Because this season, if you can tell me who's going to win from week to week, 
you know, I'll, I'll hit you up and we'll put some money on it each week. Yeah. Season has been crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, especially the especially the Vikings season. I mean, if you, if you're just a fan of the NFL, like you're watching every single Vikings game this year because you know it's going to come down to either the last play or the last drive of the game. But like you said, it, it's it's a toss up each and every week. And just speaking of toss ups, this Vikings offense has three guys: Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, or Adam Thielen, if healthy, that you can toss it up and put it in their hands. So going against this Bears defense. How do you approach that? Do you run it through JJ again, or do you say, "Oh, well, Dalvin's back," or if Thielen's back, he's got fresh legs. Hopefully, that ankle is good. But how, how do you address that? Yeah, I think I think first and foremost, this offense, even though it's maybe not as run centric as it was when Zimmer first took over, I think this is very much so a high play action pass frequency type of offense, which starts with a credible run threat, and when Dalvin. You know how he hits the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. He's probably faster in terms of miles per hour than any running back in the league. I mean, this guy seems to be up to top speed in two to three <laughs> steps. Like, it, it, and it's visibly noticed. I mean, it's mm -hmm. noticeable the way he hits the line of scrimmage. If they're able to establish that quickly, I think from there, it just organically works. Meaning Kirk can just pick who the open guy is um, when he's just distributing the football. Now, clearly they're going to have – plays dialed up for Justin because of how good he is at all three positions, the X, the Z, the slot, actually maybe four, because they put him in the backfield too now, just to get mm -hmm. him away from road coverages, you know, design brackets and doubles, high lows, is ins and outs, whatever, however they want to double him. Adam is one of the best getting off the line of scrimmage. He's a wizard along the side, along the sideline as far as keeping his feet in bounds. In the red zone, you know, I mean, he's as yeah. good as it gets down there. So, and then KJ, KJ is a deep ball threat, one of you know, the deep crossers. I mean, they, they've got yep. so many different things. I just think if all these guys come back, it starts with the run, and from there you just let Kirk deal. Just let him deal and let him get it to the open guy. Have your specific ones where you want to feature one of the guys in particular against us, maybe a certain look or a certain matchup. But, but against this team in particular, look, man, I don't think any of the matchups in the secondary are going to favor Chicago. They just aren't. Mm -hmm. So for Minnesota in this game, I think the key here is just about operating quick, getting in and out of the huddle, no, you know, no stupid penalties, no turnovers, and let the offense flow naturally. And they should, should be able to move the ball effectively. We'll see yeah. what happens. Yeah, I, I like your point there. I, I want to switch to the other side of the ball, this Minnesota Vikings defense. Zimmer's a defensive guy. We know this hasn't been the defense that he's that he's wanted the past two years. We've given up the seventh most explosives in the NFL in the passing game, but we lead the NFL in sacks. Yeah, And a, a guy who has been a, a huge attribute to this Minnesota Vikings defense is Harrison Smith, your former safety. When you look at Harrison Smith, what he's doing at age 32, year 10 in the NFL, like how do you explain that? First and foremost, football IQ is what allows you, especially at safety, to be able to continue to play at a high level because you can stay a step ahead. Mm -hmm. You're good at reading pre-snap indicators, first and foremost – by personnel grouping, then by personnel deployment, getting a tip on, okay, this personnel grouping, heavy run past this personnel deployment, you understand how they're gonna, how the route this distribution may come out. Mm -hmm. um, understanding then what your call is, what kind of leverage you need to take, how you wanna play relative to what the defensive call has been, and then just playing with good pad level, especially when you're a guy as big as Harrison. You see how, you know how big and tall he is. I think as you get older, you tend to get stiffer, more upright. You have to make sure you're staying conscious as far as your pad level, quick feet, efficient transition work, and then everything else from there. I mean, I know that sounds like, well, damn, that's a lot. But <laughs> all that stuff, think about that. All that stuff happens, ready, break, huddle, breaks. Here they come. Boom, it's 11 personnel. Boom, we got cover three. I'm down in the box in this play. I'm going two to one. So all that stuff happens in about four seconds, five mm -hmm. seconds. So it really is something that he's so used to doing. And he's been such a pro at it for so long that it just comes natural to him. And you know he puts in the work in the offseason. He's trying to take care of his body. You know, they make sure that they – they use him in various ways so where he's not always in the back end having to run and run and run and cover tons of ground. That'll just wear a guy like him out. Right. So they use him in a lot of different ways, blitz him a lot, get him down the box some, play in the deep third some. So, I mean, Zim has a good idea of how to use him. Obviously, Harrison knows how to get the most out of his skills at this point at a advanced age. Mm -hmm. And um, that usually adds up to guys who have 10, 11, 12, 13-year careers, maybe even longer. Mm. 
Yeah, I've been on record saying the only person who had more rushing yards against the Pittsburgh Steelers than Dalvin Cook was Harrison Smith. Like, how many yards he ran back and forth from the line of scrimmage, disguising those coverages? Yep. You know, you got to be careful with that sometimes because, I mean, you understand why – I mean, it's, it's understandable why you're trying to do it because mm-hmm. you're trying to put doubt into the quarterback's mind. You want to show him one thing, and then he checks into something that then plays into what you then go to. Mm-hmm. So if you're up on the line of scrimmage – and it's and you're showing blitz, and then you back out and go cover two. Well, when it's showing blitz, maybe they're going to run some fades on the outside or run, you know, some verts or something where it just loft the ball up. Well, then if you back out in the too high shell, they're throwing it right to you. Mm-hmm. So that kind of thing. So it's 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 interesting how every team like tries to play that game. But here's the thing: you never want to sacrifice your technique and your assignment for trying to be too tricky. So if you're down there in the box and you got to run out and get to a deep half, but you're messing around too much and then they quick snap it and they get the ball up and you're not in position. And yeah. you know what? With a young quarterback, young quarterback may not, you know, really give a damn what you're doing because he can't really tell anyway, right? Right, right. So they're going to just kind of go pace, 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 tempo, tempo. Mm-hmm. So to kind of maybe one, burn you because you're trying to disguise. And two, because look, I don't really know what you're doing anyway. So I'm not going to sit here and grind my gears trying to figure it out. Because I'm, it's not like I'm, you know, I've been playing 10, 15 years. And with Justin, look, Justin's greatest strength is his athleticism. Yeah. The faster they go, the more he can change the launch point and, and get out on you, the better it is for him. So it'll be interesting to see just how they strike that balance with him so they don't get burned. Yeah, uh, the Vikings, they, they can't get burned on Monday night. They, they got to get a win. Six and seven, uh, you're you're trying to get in that playoff hunt and so it's like four teams that are six and seven right now and trying to get into that playoff hunt like how, how do the vikings wanted. what do you say that's just, that's just what the league wanted right they wanted all these divisional matchups here in the last three four weeks of the season where everyone's like scrambling there's six seven eight teams still fighting for one of those three wild card spots because that makes the, the end of the season compelling for the fans right because they know that the, the teams are going to keep playing mm-hmm. nobody's going to rest there's one you know there's one by so, I mean, it's kind of crazy. I mean, we're sitting there going, we don't, I mean, we have no idea as broadcasters who's going to wind up making it in. And that's what's great. That what's, that's what for like, you know, a Monday night game, even though the records aren't as good as maybe people would want them to be for a primetime matchup, people are going to tune in because they know that the Vikings are still in it. Mm-hmm. And it's compelling. So that's pretty cool. So what do the Vikings need to do to keep that playoff hope alive? Yeah, I think, again, I think offensively, it's about being efficient, no penalties, win the turnover differential. If you get short fields, make sure you capitalize six points, not three touchdowns, not field goals. Um, stay, you know, I, I don't like to say stay balanced, but make sure that the plays are marrying up with one another. Mm. Run the football, bomb them, run the football, bomb them, run the football, screen, bomb them. I mean, they have so many different things at their disposal. I think the key for them, though, as I think defensively, again, I mean, you touched on it. The secondary has just been so undisciplined and unwilling for whatever reason to play smart football. Like you wonder why players maybe take the leverage that they take relative to what you would assume the huddle call would be not using their help, not playing smart down the field, not being able to finish on footballs when they are in position you know, Mike Zimmer gave us a great quote. I'm going to use this tomorrow night on air. He said, it's my job to get you in the best possible position to make plays. It's your job to make the damn plays. Mm-hmm. So he can't do it all. And if you can't get find a guy who will line up right and play the technique that you want, then you got to move on. And if you can't find a guy who can make the plays when they're in position, you got to move on. Mm-hmm. Both of those things have plagued this team. We'll see what happens tomorrow because the Bears have some people that can scoot now. They can get down the field mm-hmm. and make life difficult for you. So who knows? This could be one of, you know, now they're hurting on defense. Offensively, you saw what they did to the Packers mm-hmm. earlier on in that game. They can rip you now. So I don't know, maybe we're in for a shootout. We'll see tomorrow night, 7-15 on Monday Night Football on ESPN. Lewis Riddick, Steve Levy, Brian Greasy's on the call. Lisa Salter's also on the call. Uh, Lewis, looking forward to seeing you. Looking forward to that call. Looking forward to hopefully, from our perspective, a Vikings win. Thank you again. There you go. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yes, sir.